Hey guys, I'm Coyle and welcome back to my second episode of the Sci Art Edit. Today I'm going to be talking about a visual rendition of a popular musical piece called Bolero and trace this back to how the spark of a genius, even when ignited by illness, may shed light on the unexplored areas of the mind. For those who don't recognize the name, Maurice Ravel. He was a late Impressionist French composer during the earlier 20th century. His music was extremely influential during the time and is often compared to Claude Debussy. Ravel found his own way as a composer, creating pieces which were heavily influenced by a variety of different musical genres and styles, such as French Baroque, Bach, Chopin, Mozart, Spanish folk traditions and American jazz. Ravel is best known for his masterpiece Bolero, which he composed at the age of 53 years old. At around this time, he started developing the early symptoms of a neurological disorder called FTD. FTD, or frontotemporal dementia, is a progressive language and motor disorder. This meant that he slowly lost the ability to speak and understand the speech of others. His disease is also marked by compulsive behaviour and sparks of creativity. Bolero, which Ravel completed in 1928, could be classified as a product of this compulsive disorder due to the highly repetitive musical nature of this piece. Bolero alternates between two melodic themes. These two themes are repeated eight times over 340 bars. These bits here are called bars, which are ways of organizing the entire musical piece into small sections each having the same number of beats in a bar. Bolero had around 340 of such bars. At the same time, the piece holds melodically to two simple alternating staccato bass lines, consisting of very crisp, detached notes. A drum beat based on the Spanish bolero begins the piece and is then repeated over and over to the very end. He described the piece as mainly orchestral tissues and not music, of one very long gradual crescendo, which meant it gradually became intense and louder throughout the piece. The main theme was said to be derived from Spanish and Arabic folk music. Bolero was Ravel's last great work. As his disease worsened, he was unable to compose music and died in 1937, nine days after having undergone experimental brain surgery. Nearly 50 years later, we come across another individual who shares the creative ingenuity of Ravel. Dr. Anne Adams was a Canadian woman who had been trained in mathematics, chemistry and biology. She left her career as a cell biologist and a teacher in 1986 when her son became involved in a serious car crash. Adams decided to give up scientific work in order to look after him and she decided to start exploring her artistic talents. In 1994, Dr. Adams fell in love with Ravel's music. At age 53, she created a painting called Unraveling Bolero. And yes, that is a pun for those who love puns. The work translates the famous musical score of Bolero into visual format, a bar by bar representation of the popular classical piece. Each of the vertical rectangular figures represent a bar of music. Height corresponds to volume, shape to the note quality, and the colour to the pitch of Adams' favourite note in each bar. Now, around the time that Dr. Adams became fascinated with Bolero, she started to display symptoms that were identical to Ravel's brain condition. Like Ravel, Dr. Adams was also suffering from frontotemporal dementia, a neurodegenerative condition which results in the deterioration of the frontal and the temporal lobes of the brain. This was a strange twist of fate because she was completely um, unaware of Ravel's disorder when she started to paint Unraveling Bolero uh, or when she started to develop symptoms. Because of this rare brain disorder, brain tissue was deteriorating in her left hemisphere and in the right hemisphere, the area highlighted in orange, just the opposite was happening. It appeared to be growing. Previously, neuroscientists used to think that dementias hit the brain diffusely and that nothing was anatomically specific. We now realize that when specific dominant circuits in our brain are injured 
or degraded, they may release or disinhibit activity in other areas. In other words, if one part of the brain is compromised or disconnected, the other part of the brain compensates by remodeling or becoming stronger. Ravelin and Adams may have compensated for this loss of brain function with a burst of artistic creativity. Unraveling Bolero may in fact be a beautiful symptom of a terrible disease. Four years after painting Unraveling Bolero, at a time of peak creativity, she moved away from translating music towards abstraction and focused on mathematical concepts like pi. Just as Vincent van Gogh was known for forging great paintings from his own mental illness, Dr. Anne Adams' paintings provide a journey into the minds afflicted with FTD or frontotemporal dementia. Adams' paintings shed new light on how neurosystems like hers can interact to enhance the creative process. Hey guys, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I'll be uploading videos on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So you can, if you just follow any one of those pages, you'll be covered. But yeah, thank you for listening and have a great day and stay safe, guys. Bye.